Hello, 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 I'm Janice and I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be all about one thing. Spam. We are going to be making five different recipes using this. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. First thing on this list is just your classic Spam and egg sandwich. Now to make this first dish, all you'll need is Spam, of course, eggs, and a couple slices of bread. I know we're starting pretty simple. We're gonna ease our way into this video. So crank open a can of Spam, and to get it out, you can either run your knife around the edges, or you can gently squeeze the sides. But if that doesn't work, just hit the bottom of the can a few times. There we go. Once you've got this up, slice it up. You can slice it however thick you like it. Most people get about eight to 10 slices from a can. I personally don't like them that thick, so I think I got about 15 slices there. Next up, we whisk up a couple of eggs. I brought the yolk as I cracked this one, but the next one was fine. After that, you whisk it up like so, and that's the extent of which we need to do in terms of prep. Then get a pan on, slash some oil, fry up a couple pieces of Spam, not more than a minute on each side because mine were quite thin, before taking it out, wiping the pan down, re-adding some oil and pouring the eggs in. And add salt and pepper, of course. Toast two pieces of bread and then assemble. Spam, egg, and cut. Diagonally because that's meant to make it taste better. You can of course add cheese to it and make it a lot tastier But you know me, I can't eat too much cheese. So I'm happy with just egg and spam as is I did the eggs really well, so I'm really happy with it And it just hits the spot, you know, because the, the spam is a bit salty egg is very creamy I didn't add any butter or cheese to it because I can't have too much dairy, but I think this would taste Probably even better if there's cheese to it. Wait not probably, 100% better when you have cheese to it. Anyway, I'm gonna finish this and then we're gonna get to our second Spam recipe for this video. And the next thing that we're making is something called a Spam Musubi and this is what we need. So what we'll be needing today is rice, a sauce mix for when we grill the Spam and nori sheets. The first thing we do before anything is to get the rice cooking. See, I was gonna go for a full cup, but seeing as this is meant to be a snack, I thought maybe a little less. Then you know the drill. Wash the rice until the water runs clear, fill up the water as per the markings on the pot, or use your finger as a guide on where the water should hit, then put it into the rice cooker. And once that's done, we make the sauce, which is really easy, even for me. So all you need is soy sauce, rice vinegar, and then sugar. So one part soy sauce with one part rice vinegar and then one part sugar mixed together. And once that's done, we start grilling the Spam. Get a relatively thicker piece of Spam like so, and once it's lightly grilled, paint some of the sauce you've made onto the Spam and let it soak in. And once you've done one side, flip it over and then paint the other side too. And while your Spam is cooking, get yourself a rice mold. Don't have one? Don't worry, take your empty can of Spam and clean it out. That's gonna be our mold for today. And once that's done, we need to prep our seaweed. Gently take the nori sheets out of the packaging and split them into thirds. I was gonna fold and rip, but I decided against it. Cutting it was probably neater. With our Spam done, our makeshift rice mold clean and our nori sheet prepped, our rice cooker just signaled to us that the rice is now done. Scoop the rice out and while you let it cool for just a little, get some glad wrap and line your Spam can. Once that's done, scoop the rice into the can and then push it in to make it really nice and tight. So keep pushing the rice in until it's around a third of the height of the can and then place a slice of Spam in. Once you've sort of pushed it down enough, gently lift it up and there we go. I was tempted to eat it there and there, but next you gotta wrap your piece of nori sheet around it, like so. And I used a little bit of rice at the end to sort of get the, the sheets to stick together. It looks pretty good, right? My first one was quite ugly though. Anyway, here is a piece of Spam Musubi. Taste test time. It was so good, I just wanted to keep eating instead of tell you that it's really good. The best foods are the ones that brings back memories, and this brought me back all the memes. I find it quite hard to believe it myself, but it actually tastes really, really good. It was the first time I'd made this, but it tasted so similar to how I remembered it when I was in Hawaii. I will be making this again. So the next Spam recipe that we're gonna go through is kind of one of my favorite easy lunch recipes. It is 
the Spam fried rice and you can pretty much get what's kind of left in your fridge, throw it together in a pan and um, you're good. You need some frozen veggies, I've got a pack of corn, peas and carrots, some Spam of course, some spring onions, a couple eggs, garlic, ginger and the most important thing, rice. I like to use rice that's been in the fridge overnight for fried rice because it's likely to be less stodgy and it has more bite. This is all you're going to need and this recipe is so easy and so quick you can have all of this done in 15 minutes. So first we've got to prep the ingredients starting with finely chopping the garlic. That seems fine enough. Then we start slicing the ginger. That's too big so we got to break it in half. Then scrape away the skin before slicing it into thin strips and finally dicing that too. With that done we move on to the shallots. I only used a quarter of one and diced it up. Uh, by the way, these make you tear up too, just like an onion. Next up, we dice around four slices of Spam into small cubes, chop up some spring onion, crack open a couple eggs, whisk it, and then we're ready to cook. All right, I am just done prepping all the ingredients. I've chopped it all. Uh, it is now time to just whack it in the pan, flip it a little bit, and then um. It'll turn out amazing, I promise. Okay, let me take that back. We don't just whack it in. There's an order to things. Once you've added some oil and heated the pan, put the ginger first and then the shallots and then the garlic. But man, the combo of these three smell so good. Anyway, next up you add your frozen veggies. Stir it in a little bit before adding your spam. And before adding the rice, I actually added a little bit more oil. Don't skimp on the oil when you're making fried rice. You don't want it to stick to the pan. Once your rice is added, you just need to work with breaking apart the lumps or clumps or clusters, whatever you want to call it. That's what gives it that bite and makes it not cluggy. And you get that individual grain of rice kind of texture. Tossing the rice also helps separate it, but if you don't know how to toss it, grab another wooden spoon or chopsticks and just kind of lift it up and then throw it back down, like that. Next up, we've got to add our sauce to the rice, which is made with soy sauce, fish sauce, and sugar. So it's one tablespoon of soy sauce, one tablespoon of fish sauce, and one teaspoon of sugar. And so far, it's smelling delicious, but we're not done yet. We've got to add the egg on top of the rice and then quickly keep stirring and stirring and stirring and sort of flipping it as well. Look at how beautiful this looks. You just look at this and you know it's going to be a good fried rice. Add your salt and pepper to it and then stir your chopped spring onions through the rice and there we have it. A beautiful, delicious, nice smelling bowl of fried rice. All in under 20 minutes. This fried rice turned out really, really well. How you know it's a good fried rice is when the, the individual grains of rice, they don't stick to each other. That's why um, putting rice in the fridge overnight and then using that rice to cook, that really, really helps. This is delicious. It really is. Like it's so easy to make and you just throw together ingredients from your fridge. I ended up having two bowls of rice. If you have sriracha, add it in. It makes it even better. I promise. And the next item on this list of Spam recipes is a menu staple on any Hong Kong style diner cafes. And this is the egg and Spam ramen noodles. Now this is simple and you can make this under 10 minutes. So first thing you gotta do is cut up your Spam and then heat up your pan, put some oil on it and lightly grill these couple slices of Spam. At the same time, put a pot of water on the boil and once it's boiling, put your bok choy in. Wash it first, of course. Once that's done, flip your Spam and let it grill for a little bit longer before taking it off the heat. Then wipe the pan down and re-add some oil because now we're gonna fry your egg. Sunny side up. While you're waiting for the eggs to fry up, take your veggies out because they're done. And now open your packet of noodles. But leave the sauce mix and the soup mix for now and put the noodles into the boiling water that you just cooked your veggies in. And as your ramen noodles are cooking, put on a fresh pot of water because we're going to be using that as a soup base and not the water in the pot. Don't overcook your instant noodles. Three minutes is pretty much enough. And then take your noodles out, add the soup mix, add the seasoning and add the hot water that you've just boiled up. Then gently place your spam, your veggies and your egg and you're done. All right, and there we have it, a spam and egg and vegetable instant noodle. This flavor of instant noodle isn't my favorite. My favorite is the sesame oil one. That one's the best. 
It's like the perfect one to add toppings to. There's something about food that just like brings me back memories. Like this, when I eat something like this, it's like I'm at like a, like a Hong Kong diner again. It's so simple, but it's just something that hits the spot and I personally love it. I love it a lot. And whenever I have nothing in the fridge, this is something that I do. Or fried rice. The fried rice is really good as well. It is getting colder here in Sydney and the next thing on our list is a Korean stew called Burejige. It is a delicious Korean hot pot stew that's loaded with spam and sausages, noodles and so much more. There are quite a few ingredients that you have to buy but the prep itself is very very easy. Uh, so in terms of the ingredients, this is what we have. So we have from left to right rice cakes, hot pepper paste, I got the mild one, mushrooms, kimchi, spam, ramen, cheese, tofu and frankfurt sausages. I also got a Korean beef bone broth but if you can't find that you can just either use a chicken broth or a beef broth. So for this dish we've got um, a relatively big pot because the entire family is going to be eating what I make tonight. Uh, this is the pot that I use for hot pot and the prep that we need to do is just to put everything that's there, layer it nicely into this pot and then add the broth which we've got and then and then to get it start cooking. We will start with spam which we've already cut and here we are. Then the sausages. These are just Frankfurt sausages. If you want them to look pretty when you put it in the pot, cut it diagonally, don't cut it like me. Next up, the enoki mushrooms. Make sure you cut the ends and give it a good wash. A pack was enough for four people. I didn't even put the whole thing in. Layer it like so and then we move on to the tofu. I got a six block of silken tofu which makes it really easy to cut. Just be careful when you cut through the plastic because there's a lot of liquid inside. I ended up using about four blocks and cut each block into four pieces and then gently placing it into the pot like so. If you want, you can add more mushrooms, more veggies, more slices of meat. It's really up to you, uh, but make sure you add kimchi. I plopped it right in the middle and also added a sauce mix, which consisted of minced garlic, mild gochujang, which is the hot pepper paste, soy sauce, rice vinegar, and sugar. You can add more gochujang if you want. I just can't handle too much spice, even though that was mild. After that, boil up your broth. We used about a liter of broth for this. Okay, we've been boiling the soup over there for about five minutes now. So we're gonna pour everything into that pot and then um, we'll keep it on for a little bit longer so we can cook everything else. But at the very end, we're gonna add rice cakes, uh, a slice of cheese and also ramen. And of course, you can't forget the rice. Uh, it's yellow because we've started adding turmeric to our rice. All right, we are pretty much all done. We're gonna set it on the table, start the hot pot to get it like boiling, and um, and then add the, this smells really nice, and then add the ramen into it. We've also got rice, so I'll be eating rice. So we let it boil for a little longer so that the cheese melts into the soup, and when it's hot enough, we stir everything in and add the rum. Look, this was perfect for cold weather. The spam actually had some of the cheese melted into it and it went really well with the rice. I bought the mild um, sauce so it wasn't spicy at all so nothing in this stew was too spicy. We just added the ramen noodles in as well <clears throat> and we're adding another piece of cheese into the into the pot because apparently one piece isn't enough so, <laughs> so we're having more cheese. Okay, um, we are going to fully enjoy this part of stew and I'll check back with you in maybe an hour, two hours, when we're finally done. And that is it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Fridays. Check them out if you have time. Have an amazing rest of the day and I will see you in my next video. Bye. More cheese was added into the broth when I wasn't looking. How many slices did you add in? Two. There's three in total now. Yeah, and? Yeah, I'm not adding all. Okay, good. That's too many.